Hi there, it's Kim Denny with the Inspired Designs. Thanks for meeting me at the crafting table today to make our Beer Stein Tavern Wall Hanging. It has an extra little nail here at the bottom where you'll be able to hang your beer bottle opener so you can put it by the bar and you'll always know where it's at. So in your kit you have the board with the nails, you have your string, the only other things you'll need today will be a small pair of scissors, something with a blunt end like a sharpie so that you can press string down in tight spaces, and some super glue or craft glue if you have it. It's not necessary but if you have it grab it. If you want to check out some of our other kits, we have ones like the coffee mug here, and you can pick your string color, so you can do this in any color you'd like. We have the Lovebirds, which is a photo hanger. It has the clips at the bottom that you can hang pictures from. And here's another one that's available. It is the Relax Clawfoot Bathtub. So all of those are available in the Etsy shop, which you can find a link to in the description of this video. So the first section that we're going to work on here is going to be the beer. So we're going to work on these inside nails here in this little square-like or rectangular-like area. Go ahead and grab your yellow string. And all we do to get started is pick any nail in that section, so any of those inside nails, and go ahead and just tie your string around the nail twice so it makes a knot and it's nice and secure for you then. So once you're tied on, we're going to just outline the section that we're working in so that it's easy to see where we want to fill in. So we're just going to come along these inside nails and you might have to loop under some like right here you might have to loop under so it holds on and then go back over and it doesn't have to be real exact up near the top because that's going to be covered over with the white so as long as it looks something like this you're in good shape. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. And next we're going to just start making random lines to fill in the space. You just go ahead and randomly hook around any nails. Make some short lines. Make some long lines. Make some lines that go side to side. Make some vertical lines until we complete a layer. And what I consider a layer is when we've touched each nail about one time. It doesn't have to be exact. If you hit a nail more than once, that's fine. If you skip a nail, that's fine too. But you just want to kind of stay inside the space that we outlined. Go ahead and press that down once you've completed your layer. And then we're just going to outline again. We're going to go around the outline again, and we're going to complete another layer, and we're going to do this whole process four to five times in here until it's as full as you would like it to look. Everybody has a different eye for this. I always tell people, don't make it solid, because if it was going to be solid, we'd be using fabric instead of string. You want to be able to see some depth and some texture. You want to be able to see the wood through your lines. But now on this second layer, we're going to go ahead and make some new lines. Whoop, and if your string pops off, just go ahead and take your time and get it back on. So this video is not meant to be made in the time which you may make your project in. You might go faster than me. You might go slower than me. You might need to pause the video, rewind it. You might want to stop it and walk away and take a break. I always tell people when you're learning something new, it can be a little bit hard and sometimes frustrating and you certainly don't have to worry about hitting the exact same nails that I'm doing this is all very random you just want to kind of let go and just go for it kids always do really well with string art because they just think that was the end of two now we're gonna go on to layer three so we're gonna outline and then do that again as I was saying kids do really well at this because they kind of just let go and don't worry about doing everything perfectly. They let go of that perfection. And that's really kind of something that a lot of adults have trouble with, I've noticed, when I teach my, my workshops or parties. So if you're finding that you're having trouble kind of being random and maybe you're a little bit OCD or maybe you like things to be perfect, this might be a good exercise to kind of break a little bit of those habits and kind of free yourself and let yourself go a little bit. So we're on layer three here. We're just doing random. As I said, I've been stringing for a long time, so I kind of move fast. If you don't move this fast, just pause the video, finish your layer, and then start it back up, and we'll, we'll keep working together. We don't have to work at the same speed. 
So I'm going to just go ahead and out, or press down a little bit. <clears throat> and then outline again. And some people get frustrated as they're learning this because learning something new can be tricky. So if you find that you get frustrated, pause the video, walk away, take a break, stretch your hands, have some coffee or tea. Oh, so right here, I kind of went outside of my outline. So you could leave it there because it would be covered up by the white. Or if you notice that you've done something like that, you can just try and pop it back off. And that way, it'll be inside your outline. Think of it like scribbling inside the lines with a crayon. And that goes back to the randomness of it all. As you get to layers four and five here, and you can do as few or as many as you like. If you like it less dense than this, then by all means, go with whatever looks good to your eye. But as you get between layers four and five here, that was four, we're going to move to five in a second, but hold it back or prop it up and step back so you can kind of get a little perspective and see, is it even? Is there any holes that need filled? You know, is one side thicker than the other? You kind of want to step back because sometimes when you look at it up close, it gets hard to see after a while. I also always tell people at my parties that sometimes after you stare at this by the end of making your project, you're going to be like, this looks awful. I hate it. Uh, here we go into layer five. But then if you walk away or you come back tomorrow and you look at it again, you're going to be like, oh, that actually looks pretty good. Because sometimes your eyes just get a little bit overwhelmed by looking at all the different string lines and all the different nails for so long that by the end of making it, you're going to be like, I don't like this, but I promise you it's going to be great. So here we are. I'm just taking a look to make sure it's as even um, as I like. I like to be able to see the wood through it. It looks pretty good to me. We don't need to do an outline on this section because we're going to cover it up with the white and the silver. So what we're going to do is go back to the nail that has that original tail, loop to loop around it, which means you just loop around that nail twice so it kind of hangs on a little bit for you. Grab your scissors. Give yourself a nice long tail to work with. People frustrate themselves by working with two short of tails. And then just go ahead and tie those two strings together. And whoop, mine popped off the nail, so let's try that again. We're gonna go back to that original nail, loop the loop around it so it holds on, hold it taut so it doesn't let go. And then just go ahead and tie those two strings together. This is the easiest way to make a knot to finish off a string and then tie it again. And here we have the beer. Since we're going to cover this up with the silver nail, we want to get rid of these ends. So grab your glue if you have it. If you don't, no big deal, but I just do it as a precaution. Put a little drop of super glue right on the knot area. And grab your scissors and just trim it as close as you can without cutting any important strings. There we go. The next thing that we're going to do is the, the actual stein. So we're going to grab this metallic silver. The silver can get a little bit tricky because the metallics kind of twist up a little bit. So really just take a deep breath and go for it. It looks so nice when it's done, though. That's why I like to work with the metallics because it really looks pretty. So go ahead and just tie that on to any knot twice or any nail twice. And then we're going to outline the glass. So we're going to come down along the bottom here, go around the handle. I'm going to come up and then go down a bit. And I'll show you a better view of this in one second. I'm just looking to make sure I'm getting it on the right nails. There we go. Down on that one and then down the side of the beer. <clears throat> And then while I'm here, um, whoop. actually while we're here, we're going to fill, fill in the outline of the inside of the handle as well. So let's go over here and do the inside of the handle. And that way we'll just have a better visual of where we want to be filling our lines. 
And so now you could see we're not going to fill lines in there because that's we're going to leave that space empty. So it's easier to see once we outline it. We'll come down the side of the beer, go across the bottom of the beer. Up the left side of the beer. And usually I do this with my piece laying flat on the table or sitting on my lap. So when I make videos, it does get a little bit trickier to hold it up and show you, but it's the best way that I found to do it. And then here we go down the side of the stein. So now you can see the outline of the shape that we're going to fill in. There is another line of nails right here and we will create an outline on that but right now we're just going to do that random pattern and you can cross right over those um, nails that we didn't outline yet. You can cross right over those just kind of ignore them and I'll show you what we're going to do with those as we get toward the end of the stein. So now we're just doing the same thing that we did in the beer. We're just making random lines all over the section that we just outlined. Make some side to side, some diagonal, some up and down, and just work our way around. Like I said, you don't have to overthink it. You also don't have to hit every nail, and if you hit nails more than once, then that's fine too. So here we go. We're going to go up the handle. Remember to stay out of that open space that we want to leave open. And down this little space between the beer and the handle. And there's about one layer. So there we go. Now we'll go ahead and outline again. And outline the inside of the handle there. Come down the side of the beer. Loop to loop to hang on, go across the bottom of the beer. And you'll find as you're doing this, you'll start to recognize that if you're going on the outside of a curve, it'll just kind of hug onto the nails. We're going to start layer two here. If you're going on the inside of a curve, you're going to have to go on the opposite side of the nails. And you'll understand as you do it because there's only one way that it's going to hang onto the nails. Okay, so here we are just doing our randomness for layer two. If you're enjoying these projects, make sure that you follow along on social media, both on Facebook and Instagram. You can find me by searching the word Yinspired. It's Y-I-N-Z-P-I-R-E-D. You also find that in the link to the video here. You can find me on Pinterest. Of course, make sure you like the YouTube channel here so you can see whatever new videos are posted. And if you hop onto Etsy and search for Inspired and favorite the shop, then you'll get notices when I post new things in the shop as well. All right, so that's the end of layer two. We're going to go ahead and outline again. In addition to string art, I also post um, some of my daughter's handmade pottery, t-shirts that my son silk screens. So we are just a family of makers, and we love sharing all of our goods with you. So... I super appreciate you, you hanging out with us. All right, so this is the outline here. We're going across the bottom of the beer, up the side, and down the left side. All right. So we want it to get to about the same level as the beer. You could see that I'm leaving the silver up a little bit. It's not getting pushed down as far as the yellow because we want to give some three-dimensional effect. You do want to push down a bit, though, so that you have some space to work on your nails. If you're too close to the top, it's going to keep popping off. Grab that blunt end to get into this little space if you need it. And just push down a little bit on that silver. All right, here we go. Layer three. Are we on four? I think I'm... Hmm. <laughs> I think this is three. I think we just did the outline for three, so now we're doing three again. Okay. It doesn't really matter. You really just go until your eye is happy. Some people like less. Some people like more. It's your project, so you get to be in charge. All right, 
and we'll get in this little space don't forget to put some silver in there come back down work along the bottom And there really is no right or wrong way to do this. So you really can't mess these projects up, which is what I really like about string art. It is something that anybody can do, even if you don't have crafting experience. If you can tie a knot and you have some patience, or you can learn to have some patience. <laughs> a lot of times at my parties, people are growling under their breath. So if you get to that point, just take a break. Just walk away. Here's where we want to hold it back, see what what areas need extra attention, what needs filled in a little bit more. Then go ahead and do another outline. And doing that outline will create a nice thick border so that when you see it from the side, it gives it some kind of weight or thickness. Come across the bottom of the beer again. And remember, push down as you need to. If you find your string is popping off, you probably need to push down. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and just fill in some of those areas that need a little bit more color to them. Learning something new can be a little bit hard sometimes, but once you get the hang of this, they're really nice because you can kind of just zen out and relax, let your mind do something different and new. That's always good for you. And there's nothing better than making something yourself, right? <laughs> So we're just filling in again. There we go. And take a look at it. Get a little bit of space between you and the project to really see what it looks like. And if you're happy with it, then we're going to go ahead and tie off. So, oh, here, I forgot. I'm sorry. We're not going to tie off yet. We're going to do this border. So you see how it's kind of thickly outlined? I'm going to show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is just loop around two nails. So we go on and then loop around the next two. So you're going down along the bottom of two nails and then come back up over the top of those two nails and then down on the bottom and up around the top. So you're creating a circle or an oval around every two nails. It'll help kind of close some of those gaps that you see where you couldn't get your string to reach and it also creates that nice outlined effect. So just keep working your way all the way around, going around every two nails in a circle. <clears throat> so then as you get to an area like the bottom of the glass here where it curves in, so I circled around these two. Now if I would go to the next nail, then it's hard to see here, but the silver string would be stretched over the yellow instead of hugging against the nails. So I just circled around these two and I don't want to just go to the next one because then the silver string is away from the nails. So what you want to do after you circle around those two, if you ever see that happening, then loop to loop around the front nail and then start your journey to loop the next two nails. And as you're doing it, it will make more sense. It's really hard to see um, but you'll know when it happens. So if, you're, if your string is not hugging around the nails after you circle around two when you're going to the next one, loop the loop around the front nail first and then go to the next two. Okay, so over here, we just did it along the bottom of the beer. Now we're going to go up the side of the beer. So this is kind of on the inside track of nails where we hit the yellow. And then we're going to start here. <clears throat> I'm going to come down at this point and start doing the two loops around the inside of the handle. So you can see now I'm on that second track of nails. 
and I'm going to make my way around here. Here we have to do again loop to loop around that front nail and then loop around the next two, loop to loop again and then loop around the next two. And so here we're just creating the outline on the inside of the handle since we were in this area anyway. And then we'll go back up and continue our journey along the outside of the handle. So we're still doing the same technique, just looping around every two nails. And I know it's a little bit hard to see. So take your time, pause the video, don't get too frustrated, and just take your time. So here we are going down the edge of the handle, looping around every two nails. And now that I got to this part, I'm going to connect the handle right here. So I'm going to continue looping the two, but I just wanted to show you I'm going to connect the bottom of the handle. And now, oops, let me try that again. And now I'm going to come down these nails that we didn't do anything with yet, and I'm going to do the every two across there and that will create the line that kind of designates the base of the glass from the vessel of the glass and it'll just give us a nice visual break there So now I'm going to go back across these again. So they'll actually be double outlined, so it'll make it a little bit thicker so our eye can see it a little bit better. And it just creates that, like I said, visual break. Okay, and now that we got over to the other side again, we're going to hop over to the outer edge of the glass because we have to finish these couple of nails along the side here. And voila, we have our outline. Now you can leave it as is, just doing it around one time. On some of my projects, I do go around a second time and make the outline a little bit thicker. So just take a look at it, decide if you want to stop or if you want to go for that second time around. And I think today I'm just going to stop with one. Since my starting string was way over on the other side, I'm going to show you how to tie off over here. You could take your string all the way back over there, loop to loop around that nail, and then tie off with that one like we did with the yellow. But I'll show you another technique here too. So we're going to leave a nice long tail. Do not cut your tail short or you're never going to be able to tie your knots. And then take the end of your string up over the top of that nail head. And you have a loop in your other hand. And so then you're going to pull that end through the loop while you hold it onto the nail. And it just goes around that nail head. So once again, you took your string up over the nail head and then you pull it through that loop. And here, if you can see, oh, wait, it popped off the nail. I got to put it back on and pull it so it pulls tight and it's going right around the nail. And that ties a knot. So that's good. We'll deal with those ends in a few minutes. We're going to hop up and grab our white string. We're going to start on the foam of the beer. Super easy because now you already know the technique. So just tie on to any nail. We're going to outline this section and you kind of just zigzag in and out of these nails. They're kind of in a zigzag pattern. You don't have to worry about being super exact because the thick fuzzy white yarn that we use to outline the foam will cover up any mistakes or errors or whatever you want to call them that you make. Um, so you can be kind of not too precise here, but you're basically just kind of zigzagging in and out of these nails to create the outline of the shape so you know what you're filling in. And then come down along the handle there, the top of the handle, and then you'll come around to these nails where you were creating the beer. And like I said, you don't have to worry about being too, too precise here because that white fuzzy yarn is going to cover up any mistakes. You'll come up over here, and so this is what your outline should just about look like. 
We're going to use the same technique here that we did before. We're going to start our random lines, four to five layers or whatever looks good to your eye. You won't be able to push these down quite as much because you've got layers built below them already with the yellow and then the silver. And plus we want to give it a little bit three-dimensional look so we're going to leave the foam closer to the top of the nail heads and you'll just push down enough so that you have room to work. If you want to uh, check out our mini kits, I do some minis that are seven inch tall cutout figures. For instance, I have um, some dinosaurs, an elephant, a mermaid or whale's tail, all kind of fun things. They're seven inches tall. They are smaller projects, so if you have any teens or tweens that might want to learn string art, those are great little kits for them. Or you could use them for projects at birthday parties. Or you could just do them for yourself and keep them for you, give them as gifts once they're already made, whatever you'd like. But I do have some minis in the Etsy shop, so check those out as well. They come with written directions. They come with a little card of pre-selected colors, and the nails are already in the wood, and the wood's painted just like this was, so they are ready to go. All right, so once you have your first layer done, go ahead, do your outline again. Like I said, you don't have to worry about being super precise here because a lot of this edging will get covered up by your fluffy yarn, which I just love. And then go ahead and start your random lines, creating some new lines this time to fill in the space, spaces. And it's hard to tell the difference on the video between the white and silver, but in person there is quite a difference and they look really nice next to each other. On video it kind of looks like they blend in a bit, but they're really, really nice in person. So like I said, just press down a little bit just to give yourself enough room to work, but you're going to really leave the white pretty close to the middle to the top of the nails. Go ahead, create your next outline. Start your random lines again, filling in any spaces that need attention. When your string pops off, take a deep breath. Keep going. <laughs> it happens to all of us. And then, let's see here how it's looking. It keeps popping on me. I gotta press down a little bit. Get that in there. There we go. Yep, press down. It does get really uh, filled up, so make sure you take the time to do this. I know I say it a lot, but it is important, or else you'll never get the string on. All right, here we go. Another outline layer. And take a step back, get a little bit of space between you and the project so you can see better with your eye what needs attention. Go ahead and do those last few areas. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel here so that you can stay connected and see whatever is coming up next. I have lots of new projects in the works, so more kits will be coming your way. And I think I like it. 
think it looks good. So I'm going to take this back over to the nail I started on, loop to loop around. Here's my original string. Loop to loop there. Hold it tight. Grab your scissors, cut that long tail, and just go ahead and tie those twice together to create your knot. Here we're going to grab the super glue. Oh, tie it one more time just for good measure. There we go. Grab the super glue. Put a little dot at the knot here, just as a precaution. And while I have it out, I'm going to put a little dot at my starting silver spot and my ending silver knot. And then let that dry for a minute. Go ahead and grab your scissors. Cut close, but don't cut any important strings that should be still attached. If you do happen to snip a string that you would like to still have be attached, just grab your super glue again and glue it to the next closest string or nail, whatever you can do. We're going to finish up here with this fuzzy white yarn. So grab your fuzzy white. And same technique pretty much um, it's a little different to work with obviously because it's so thick but just go ahead and tie this onto a nail I'd love to see your completed projects too so if you want to share pictures feel free to hop onto Facebook uh, look for Yin Inspired and share it on the page there I do some giveaways and fun stuff and just share some different art projects with you on there as well but here we're just kind of weaving in and out of these nails um, I like to push it down though so that you can actually see the nails through the yarn I think it looks really pretty when you can see the little glints of silver through the yarn so you might need to kind of work with it a little bit to push it out of the way so that you can see the little silver nail heads and then just keep working your way in and out as you go around and you're just kind of hugging it around the nails as you go and let's see so now we're down here we're just tracing basically the same line that we already made with the white just going in and out of these nails and moving the fuzziness out of the way so that you can see the nail head and then here we are back to where we started and I'm gonna just use up the rest of this yarn that was on the little bobbin just instead of wasting it so it'll be a little bit thicker I don't know if it'll make it all the way around or not so I'm just gonna start weaving in and out of them again you could tie off right where you landed if you want to you don't have to continue the journey but I'm just gonna use it up so I'm just gonna keep working my way around it does get a little bit thicker by doing this so make sure you move it out of the way so you can see those shiny nail heads come through And weaving in and out. Sorry, my hands are out of shot here, but it's the same thing I've been doing, so I think you've got it by now. And come back down around. I might actually make it all the way around. Let's see. If not, I'll just tie off wherever I land. So just leave yourself a long enough tail to be able to wrap it around the nail and tie off if you're trying to use up your yarn too. Or if you stopped where you started, then you just tie the two tails together like we've been doing. And look, oh, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. We did. All right. So I will loop to loop this around that original nail. And I have just enough here to tie these two together. I'm so glad that you joined me today. So I hope you're loving your project. Like I said, if you don't love the looks of it by the end, take a walk away and come back later or tomorrow. And I bet you're going to be surprised by it. So just push that down a little bit so you can see all your nail heads come through. Make it pretty. Then we're going to grab our scissors, cut off these two little tails, and just like that, we have a completed project. Looks great. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the project. I hope you'll try some others. And I'd love to see a picture of your completed project. Good job. Bye-bye, everybody.